top fuel drag racing action at Eastern Creek, here's Nathan Prendergast. Hello and welcome to Eastern Creek Raceway in New South Wales for the 1996 Nitro Championships. Eight cars assembled here today which will probably be one of the toughest fields ever seen in Sydney. Let's have a look at qualifying and the story is that all the high horsepower cars unable to get down the track. Number one qualified, Darren De Filippo. Bob Sherry in the NEC car comes in second with Robin Kirby in three. So as you see, the likes of Jim Reed and Graham Cowan a long way down the qualifying order. The first pairing out in the first round of Top Fuel Eliminator sees Stephen Reed in the San Jose Cranes Top Fuel Dragster up against Robin Kirby. Stephen Reed has had some real problems with uh, qualifying as yet to get the car down the racetrack. Nice strong burnout from the man. A lot of throttle control there. These cars are very touchy. Really need to have uh, a lot, a lot of throttle control in the burnout or you can do the engine some real harm. As I said, Stephen Reed yet to get the car down the track has uh, got the horsepower, we're well aware of that, but hasn't quite got the clutch set up. Robin Kirby, on the other hand, could go down the racetrack in 5.4, 5.5 seconds very consistently and uh, can bite the opposition. A lot of people know this man as the Kirby curse and do not like to race him in the first round of elimination. Stephen Reid producing well in excess of 5,000 horsepower from this top fuel dragster. But as I said, the clutch situation is yet to come into effect. The car not able to hook up, hook up had some real tyre shake problems during qualifying and hence uh, qualified back in the number six position. Robin Kirby 550 yesterday put him into number three, a position which uh, he will be very happy with and will only look to step it up from here. You can see the big superchargers on top of these engines pumping in around about 30 to 35 pound of boost as they go down the racetrack. Very touchy off the start line. These cars go from around about an idle of 2,400 RPM up to around about 7, 7,500 RPM in less than a second. In that time, they've reached the first 60 foot of the racetrack. Both cars into stage. Can they pump? Find the tune up. The car looks strong. Kirby's with him though. Stephen Reed starts to streak away. The Raposada team gets there with a 507. 280 mile an hour or 451 kilometers an hour looks as though they've found their tune up that's a great showing for them they really struggled during qualifying robin kirby a 545 was a good performance from him stepping up from qualifying let's have a look at it on the replay kirby's with him at half track but then the horsepower from the Raposada team winds it up. Actually had the shoots out a little bit early, we can see there, and carried him through to the win. Number one qualifier now in Top Fuel Eliminator is Darren De Filippo from Victoria. Darren uh, really shocked a lot of people yesterday coming out. The first pass down the track ran a strong 5.25. He's in beside Terry Sainty in the all Australian built billet aluminium three valve top fuel sainty engine car terry a uh, a young drag racer let's have a look at this shot from friday qualifying the throttle sticks open look at the ride from the man a fantastic driving job from terry sainty this is uh, a shot from testing which they uh, did in qualifying on friday and it really was a great drive from terry to keep the car in one piece Jenny Hatters and Eagle High Energy uh, Ignition League getting behind this team. And they really are doing big things in Australian top fuel drag racing. Big burnout from Terry. That's what he's famous for in top fuel. The crowd really get behind him. Another young gun in beside him, Darren De Filippo. Nice big burnout from him as well. This is the last showing for this car. De Filippo has uh, recently bought a uh, X. To let a top fuel dragster out of the United States of America, and the next time we'll see the Filippo name, it will be in a different race car. Terry Saney, on the other hand, well, they're always trying new things with this car. It's a twin overhead cam, all billet, Australian built engine. They're recently trying out their new billet rear end, a 12 inch differential, which they've put in the car for this weekend, and things are looking good for that team. Darren Filippo, well, he's looking good, qualified in the number one position, a 525 and uh, they've still got a lot more horsepower. That's the reason they're stepping up to a new car. They're, they've found that the amount of horsepower that they're trying to feed through this old chassis, the car is not liking it. It, it tends to unload the tyres, and they really need to step up to a later model chassis design in order to get the power to the racetrack. 
Well, has Sainty been able to uh, just find the power to get by to Philippa? It'll be a real upset. The number eight qualifier up against the number one. That's the way they meet in the first round. And can Sainty get around him? It's going to be a big ask. The, the Philippa moving into stage now. The true flow exhaust family car. Both cars bumping into stage. You can see Terry's into stage. Now to Filippo's in one flash. They'll be gone. The wheel's up for Sadie, but there's no chance. He goes up in a ball of flame. Supercharger explosion. Look at the wild ride for the Filippo there. Looks as though it may have hurt the engine, but he gets the win. A 5.39, 394 kilometers an hour. A good pass considering the car had some problems. Let's have a look at it on the replay. Straight off the start line, you see the Filippo streak away. Terry Saini blows the supercharger off it. Now the De Filippo car starts to hurt the motor. A lot of smoke, a little bit out of shape, but he gets the win anyhow with that great 539. He'll be back for the next round of eliminations. Now we see a, uh, a famous matchup. Graham Cowan in the Shell rocket ship. The top fuel dragster, proudly uh, supported by Snap-on Tools and Crane Camp, up against the NEC top fuel dragster of Bob Sherry. Cowan was one of those uh, high horsepower cars that really had troubles during qualifying, was unable to hook it up to the racetrack, had tyres shake, smoked the tyres on a couple of qualifiers, and it's going to be very interesting to see what he comes up with on this run. Bob Sherry, on the other hand, well, he was the number two qualifier, and I'd say that's probably their best qualifying effort ever in the history of uh, their top fuel involvement in Australia. Graham Cowan, we've seen him uh, run strong before, of course the first man in Australia, the first man outside of the United States of America as a matter of fact to run a four second pass, jumped straight in with that 489 a number of years ago at Calder Park in Victoria. The Sherry team have got, been going quicker and quicker, they've run into the 530s before and they're really going to need another performance around the 53, maybe even a 52 if they want to get around Graham Cowan. Plenty of horsepower being produced. You can hear that pop from the nitro-methane. These 500 cubic inch push rod hemis producing, as I said before, 5,000 horsepower plus. A little bit of a uh, difference between these two cars in the technology. Graham Cowan has the uh, latest stuff straight from the States. The NEC team using some uh, older equipment but still definitely know how to produce horsepower and know how to get this car down the racetrack. You can see the difference between the two cars as they move into stage. Graham Cowan for Shell and Rocket Industries. Bob Sherry for the NEC team. They want a good performance here. Great shot from behind. You really get an uh, idea of those big, big rear tyres on these cars. Cowan comes out hard. It's, all, it's Graham Cowan out in front. Looks like he smokes the tyres, takes the lights out. Graham Count across the centre line. That'll disqualify him. I think he may have got there first, but the win will be handed to Bob Sherry. Sherry runs a strong 5.39. Cowan a 5.34. But when we have a look at the replay, I think you'll find that Cowan may have crossed the centre line. The car comes out hard, producing big horsepower. As the clutch, the clutch locks up, you see it turn the tyres, gets out of shape, power slides across the centre line and takes the timing lights out. That's an automatic disqualification when you cross the centre line. Graham Cowan will be very, very unhappy with that. He wanted a good performance here at the Nitro Championships. He had the horsepower, but unfortunately disqualified by crossing the centre line. Here's the current championship leader in Top Fuel Eliminator, Jim Reed, the 14 times Australian Top Fuel Champion, up against the Queen of Speed, the first lady in the world to run 300 miles an hour. She didn't do it in Australia, but she did it in the States a few years ago. Rochelle Splat in the dragway, Bob Jane T-Mart entry. Strong burnouts on both sides of the racetrack. The burnouts are a vital part of drag racing. They put down a, uh, a good patch of hot, sticky rubber down on the racetrack. It's almost like a launching pad for these cars to leap off the start line. Big wide tyres to plant this uh, massive amounts of horsepower that these cars produce. Rochelle was another one of those people uh, who had trouble in qualifying. They've had clutch problems, I believe. Haven't quite been able to hook it up. Jim Reed is also uh, in the same category. No one denies the amount of horsepower that these cars produce. No one denies that they can uh, get the cars down the racetrack. It's just they haven't shown that during qualifying and it's going to be interesting to see who has the right tune-up for this first round. It's been that case right the way through elimination so far 
And this is going to be no exception. Jim Raid for Jim Raid Racing and Valvoline. Another Valvoline car on the side in Michelle Splat. She's got a lot of followers throughout the country. The little lady looking to do well at the 96 Nitro Championship. Jim Raid looking to his, extend his lead in the championship. If he can wrap it up here this weekend, he's in good stead of taking it out at the Grand Finals, which is a, a few months from here. Straight up in smoke for Rochelle. Jim Reid charges through for the win. He runs a 5.42, 275 miles an hour. 5.42, well, he got the car down the racetrack. That's what he needed to do. I'm not sure whether a 5.42 is exactly what he wanted, but uh, at least it's a win, and he'll be back for the semifinals. Let's have a look on the replay. Rochelle doesn't even make the 60-foot mark, and the car goes straight up into tyre smoke. Tries hard to pedal it, but realises that there's not much chance of catching Jim Reid. He powers down the racetrack, picks up the win. And that closes round one of Top Fuel Eliminator here at Eastern Creek Raceway. Some interesting passes right across the board. We'll be back with the semi-finals and finals a little later on in the show. Certainly some brilliant action there from Eastern Creek. We're looking forward to seeing more of that a little later. ...to Eastern Creek and Nathan Prendergast. Back at Eastern Creek Raceway for the semi-finals of Top Fuel Eliminator. Darren De Filippo, the young gun, qualified in the number one position, up against the 14 times Australian champion Jim Reed. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. We saw De Filippo on his first pass uh, lose a gasket, I believe. The car posed a little bit of oil under the tyres. That's why we saw, saw it get so loose. Jim Reed put in a strong 540, but I still believe he's stuck with those clutch problems that we saw in qualifying. Good burnouts once again. Jim Reed has uh, got the horsepower, but the problem he's been having is the clutch has not been locking up and the car has been sliding down the racetrack. That's why we've seen the, uh, the slow ET. Still pretty good speed, though, 275 mile an hour on his last run. De Filippo. Things seem to be going well for him, although uh, it may be burning up a little bit. That's just a guess from his last run. We did see a fair bit of smoke, a little bit of oil but he's got to get it together if he thinks he's going to get around Jim Reed on this pass. Jim Reed currently leading the Australian Top Field Championship. He really needs to uh, extend it here at Eastern Creek if he wants to wrap up his 15th title. Darren De Filippo, the last outing for this race car, stepping up shortly, and we should see this car at the Grand Finals in November with an all-new combination. Can they get the power to the racetrack? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Jim Reed moving into stage. Darren De Filippo likewise. These cars pumping massive volumes of fuel through the 500 cubic inch bushrod engines. Lots and lots of horsepower. 140 decibels released from these motors. They are awesome things to watch. Jim Reed gets out. De Filippo out in front. We see the flames. We see the smoke. But De Filippo gets there first. A 5.31 at 401 kilometers an hour. No shoots for De Filippo. Can he pull it up? No, he's gone off and he's hit the gravel. There won't be any problems though. Not a lot of speed on board. And he'll uh, bring the car to a nice gentle stop in the gravel pit. Jim Reed, a 5.32 from him. What a fantastic pass. Let's look at it on the replay. You can see the fuel hosing out of the left-hand side of Reed's motor. Up in smoke for De Filippo. A bit of flames, but he stays in it. Gets across the line by just about a car length and a 5.31 beats a 5.32. De Filippo into the final of Top Fuel Eliminator. Who will he meet? It'll either be Bob Sherry in the NEC Top Fuel Dragster or Stephen Reid in the Rapposada Racing Top Fuel Sano Cranes entry. This is going to be a fantastic pairing. We saw uh, Reid put on a 5.07 in the first round. That was, uh, that was their baseline. They've found their tune-up. They've found their combination. Now they want to step it up. Bob Sherry is in a similar position. He put in a good pass, but he, he's going to need to go a, a fair bit quicker. I'd say around about three-tenths of a second quicker if he thinks he's going to get by, uh, by Stephen Reid. These guys are really feeding a lot more horsepower through this car. They've uh, done very, very well with the equipment that they have, and it is a full credit to the team to qualify not only in number two, but to be here in the semi-finals of Top Fuel Eliminator. The way drag racing is going in, in Australia at the moment is just absolutely outstanding. The cars are going quicker and quicker. We're seeing personal bests right across the board, and things are certainly hotting up in Top Fuel Eliminator for the 1996 championship. 
Stephen Reid, well, he also needs a good performance here this weekend. He's currently lying in second in the Australian Top Field Championship, and a, a good performance here today will see him close the gap between Jim Reid. Bob Sherry from South Australia, probably the most travelled of the Top Field competitors. The Rapposada team hails from New South Wales. Ray Ward just guiding Stephen Reid into stage. Tommy Stephen Reid, an ex-British uh, competitor, now lives in Australia, loves the drag racing, is doing a fantastic job in top fuel. Both cars into stage. Can Bob Sherry get around the Rapposada team? Reid wants to get it down the racetrack. Both cars get away cleanly. Lots of spark for Sherry, and Ra uh, the Rapposada team gets the win. A 5.25, 423 kilometres an hour. Looks as though the car may have had a little bit of tie shake at mid-track, but it's a win anyhow. Problems for uh, Sherry. Let's have a look at it on the replay. Look at the horsepower for Reed. Tie shake, we see him have to pedal it. Sherry's out in front at this stage and lots of spark. Looks like it's destroyed the rear end there. Perhaps a differential or a clutch. We're not sure, but it's uh, aborted his run. And the win goes automatically to Stephen Reed. Well, if you think you've seen this car come out a little bit earlier, you will be correct. Graham Cowan and the Shell rocket ship put in that uh, strong pass earlier on. And uh, just for some testing and a little bit of an added bonus, both himself and Rochelle Splat have come back for some testing passes. Rochelle has been struck with clutch problems uh, this weekend. and She really wants to get the car down the racetrack to find out what, uh, what the problems are, see, see if they've found it, see if they can solve it. Graham Cowan is in the same position. He's got a, uh, a lot of guests from Shell here this weekend. And it's a little bit of an uh, added bonus, as I said. A couple of more top field passes. They're always exciting to watch. And it also gives the guys an idea to find out if they're going in the right direction with the tune-up. Well, the Shell rocket ship actually got across the line first in the first round of eliminations, but it was uh, across the center line, took out the likes, and uh, disqualified himself. It was very unfortunate because we know he had the horsepower. Graham Cowan, the first man in Australia to run a four-second pass. We've seen a couple since. We have the potential to see another pair on this run. Rochelle Splat, she's the queen of speed. She's the little lady that everyone likes to see do well. The dragway team want to get around their problems here this weekend. Got to get the car down the racetrack. They're going to the Winter Nationals in a couple of weeks and things are only going to heat up there. Both of the cars edging into stage. A bonus run two top fuel drags. Does it cost a lot of money to get these cars down the racetrack? Around about $5,000 a pass if nothing goes wrong. Edging them into stage now. Both cars are in. Watch for the head of flames. Things are getting a little bit dim. You can see them light up. Rochelle up in smoke. Looks as though the clutch is locked up and Cowan on a good run. A 5-1-1 for him. A great pass. He needed that in the first round of eliminations but at least they've found uh, perhaps what their problem is and Graham Cowan's 5-1-1 is a good performance for the Shell rocket ship. Let's look at it on the replay now. Rochelle's car gets out hard. They had clutch problems, and uh, I think they may have found their way around it. It locks them up this time, smokes the tyres. Graham lights it up, drives it through the top end of the racetrack. Now a view from a different angle. You can see Rochelle straight up in smoke, but Graham, the car looking great. Black tracking all the way down the racetrack. May have dropped a few cylinders, but a 5-1 is still a good performance from him. Terry Saini out now in the uh, Sainty Engineering Top Fuel Dragster. They're in another position to get some test passes in. They uh, have tried a number of things this weekend and they, they really want to get the car down the racetrack. They uh, have played with a couple of combinations and none of which have really worked for them so far. The Eagle High Energy Ignition leads uh, Genie Headers and Kendall Oil's car is a beautifully uh, turned out piece. A great ambassador for Australian drag racing and it's good to see them trying something different. Twin overhead cam, billet three valve engine. Terry will put it into stage, go to the high side. Hopefully things will work for them this time. The car comes out, picks the front wheels up, starts to move around a bit and Terry shuts it off. Well, I think that they will get some valuable information from that. Also testing a new computer system here this weekend. And that will give the team an idea to analyse the information and uh, be in a good position when they move to the Winter Nationals. The car comes out. Look at the tyre shake. I think that's why he shut it off. Shook the tyres pretty hard. Maybe dropped a few cylinders. And Terry electing to shut the car down and uh, save it from hurting some parts. This is the final of Top Fuel Eliminated. This is what people have come to see. 
Darren De Philippi, the number one qualifier. He's had a fantastic race meeting. It's the last outing for a car, and what a way to send it off. He's in the final, but what an ask. He's up against the awesome Sano Cranes. Top field drags are driven by Stephen Reid. Stephen Reid moving a long way forward to start his burnout. Starts his uh, hot sticky tyre marks close to the start line. It's probably a good position to put them in. It's no good starting a burnout a long, long way back and ending it before it gets to the start line. The idea of those hot sticky tyre marks is, uh, is a launching pad, a, a good uh, additional traction on the racetrack for the cars to leap off the start line with. You can see the big front wheels and big wings on this car. A lot of people may remember it when it ran the smaller tyres and the smaller front wings. They had some real handling problems with the car with the amount of horsepower they were making. So they've elected to run the larger front wheels and the larger wing. Five foot across the front end of this car. That's the length of those wings and they produce a lot, a lot of downforce. Likewise, those big wings on the top of those uh, cars putting out around about three and a half thousand pounds of downforce. So they need to balance it. That's why we see those big wings on the front of the car. Well, the Pom's been making plenty of horsepower. Stephen Reed, can he get it to the track? De Filippo, he's got to pull on a good performance to get around him. This is side-by-side -side drag racing. Look at the Raposada team leap ahead. This is going to be quick. 494, a 494, the third ever four-second pass at Eastern Creek Raceway. A fantastic performance from them. 288 miles an hour, a great pass for the final of Top Fuel Eliminator. Let's look at it on the replay. Big head of flame from the car. Things looking fantastic. De Filippo shuts it off. I think he's, he's realised that there was no way he was going to catch that team. Stephen Reid, a fantastic pass. Look at it, picture perfect, straight down the centre of the racetrack. This is quick, 4.94 seconds. That makes it around about the third quickest pass in the history of drag racing. Winner of Top Fuel Eliminator, Stephen Reid, congratulations. 4.94 in the final, you must be very, very happy. Oh, yeah, I'm so happy for all the crew. I mean, it's... Uh... We worked this weekend, I mean, we really struggled in qualifying. Then the first round, I mean, we just put in something that would work, and it did. And then in the final, I mean, we knew with a big cam engine, and this is probably the only place we've actually been able to use that sort of power at the moment. So it's, uh, it nosed over again at the top end. We're still too rich at the top end, but I mean, it's, it's working now. That leaves the other uh, barrier still open, the 300 mile an hour. When are we going to see that? When we do it. <laughs> Stephen Reid and Santo Rapposada are very happy with their team's performance here at Eastern Creek Raceway. They now trail by only 10 points in the 96 Championship. Well, that wraps it up here from Eastern Creek Raceway. Stephen Reid, victor in Top Fuel Eliminator. Racing at Eastern Creek, here's Nathan Prendergast. Hello and welcome to Sydney's Eastern Creek Raceway for the 1996 Nitro Championships. Pro Stock Eliminator on today's program with the number one qualifier, Robert Quattrocci. Joe Polito, the only Ford in the field in number two, and Tony Wedlock from Queensland slips into number three. On screen now, Joe Polito. Polito's in beside Jerry Parenti. Parenti all the way from uh, South Australia. Polito, a uh, Sydney-based competitor in the uh, Ford Probe, as I said, the only Ford competitor in the field. Joe really knows how to get that probe to run hard, has uh, run some very strong 780s, qualified for the 788 to get into the field here today. The number one qualifier, Robert Quattrocci, ran a 787, so only a hundredth of a second separating one and two qualifiers. Very, very tight field, this Pro Stock Eliminator, not only on the racetrack, but in the point score. I believe the top four competitors separated by around about 40 points coming into this race meeting. Both the cars will go into stage, bring them right up on the rev limiters. One flash of pro starters we see in all Group 1 categories and the cars head off down the racetrack. Side by side, very hard to pick his pro stock, but Joe Polito comes up with the win. A 793, 274 kilometres an hour is a good pass for him. 793, well he has the potential to run a little bit quicker. You can see on the replay the cars coming out on around about 8,500 RPM, carrying the front wheels cars dancing beautifully, they, they run five-speed uh, transmissions in these cars, manually shifted as they head down the racetrack, but Polito, with the horsepower on this occasion, gets there first and a great 790.
Peter Ridgway, the 1995 Australian Pro Stock Champion, in beside Bruce Leake, the 1994 Australian Pro Stock Champion. So uh, a fair bit at stake here between these two competitors. I'd say that both of them are, are looking to, uh, to push their cars to some good performances. They want to chase points. Pro Stock, very, very close. Every point that they can gain is very valuable in this class. Leake gets out Harvard, Ridgeway out in front at this point in time. I don't know whether the Cutlass has uh, got the horsepower. Leake normally with the speed, but Ridgeway gets there first on this occasion. An 807, 276 kilometres an hour. Bruce Leake, I think he may have had a little bit of a top end charge, but Ridgeway getting there first. We have a look at the Speed Week Penrite replay now, and you can see Ridgeway uh, leading straight off the start line. I think it was a hole shot that got him the advantage. Leak starts to wind up the cut list, but uh, half a car length across the finishing line, and Ridgeway picks up the win. Number three qualify now in Pro Stock Eliminator, Tony Wedlock in the Ultimate Motorsports uh, Pontiac. Beautifully turned out car. Tony is uh, one of the real veterans of Australian Pro Stock uh, racing. In beside one of the, uh, the relative newcomers, Bruno Cognetto in the Victorian Performance Wholesale car. Another Oldsmobile Cutlass and another finely turned out machine. Pro Stock, there's uh, a lot of class in the way that these cars are presented. A lot of hours of maintenance go into these things. They're naturally aspirated, small block uh, motors, around about 350 to 330 cubic inches and producing in excess of 850 horsepower. On the limiters, come out hard and it's wedlock out in front. I don't know whether Cognetto's gonna be able to come back. You can never pick it in Pro Stock Eliminator side by side, and I think it was Cognetto there first. Bruno Cognetto picks up the win, puts Tony Wedlock out in the first round, 793, 273 kilometers an hour. Well, uh, Wedlock came out first. He had, had the whole shot, the car led. Got a little bit loose in uh, as far as these pro stock cars are concerned anyway, but the horsepower from the Victorian Performance Wholesale car came on strong in the second half of the racetrack, stretches his legs, and there you see it with pro stock always close. Another fantastic pass. Well, it's the Pacific Performance Pontiac, the number eight qualifier, up against Rob Quattrochi, the South Australian, the number one qualifier in Pro Stock Eliminator. Beautifully turned out car runs for Belvoline, obviously, and uh, mobiles and more. This Chevy Beretta has uh, run into the 780s, a personal best for Kim Petterwood in the Pontiac being a 797. So he really needs to find some horsepower if he's gonna get around Quattrochi on this pass. I don't know whether the Beretta is uh, going to be able to hold off Petterwood. Well, it, we see it there, a, uh, an easy win as far as Pro Stock is concerned. 786, that's the quickest pass in the first round so far. 274 kilometres an hour is also a good speed. And that brings a close to round one of Pro Stock Eliminator. We'll be back with the semi-finals and finals a little later on in the show. To Eastern Creek Raceway for the Pro Stock Finals. Down to four cars in Pro Stock Eliminate at the semi-finals now. Bruno Cognetto on screen in the Victorian Performance Wholesale car. Bruno, a, a relative newcomer to the sport of Pro Stock, but has uh, grabbed the bull by the horns and is really doing a fantastic job. He's in beside the number two qualifier though, Joe Polito in the Ford Probe. Both these cars are uh, immaculate with their presentation. Bruno from Victoria, Joe Polito from Sydney, New South Wales. These cars often to refer to as the touring cars of drag racing, naturally aspirated sedan body vehicles. Polito's into stage, Cognetto holding him out a bit. The cars will go right up onto the limiters around about 8,500 RPM, bouncing hard on the red limiters, and then you'll see the one flash of the three ambers. Polito's a little bit loose, he may have the horsepower to come around him. I can't pick it from here. The cars streak towards the finishing line, and I'm pretty sure Polito gets there first. Yes, it is Joe Polito with a 7.95, 269 kilometres an hour, down on the speed, but a 7.95 is still a win. We have a look at it on the replay. Polito's car comes out heads left, gets a little bit unsettled, but Cognetto uh, on a nice smooth pass. Looks as though he had it in the bag. The Ford obviously found the power on the day and streaked ahead. Not by much though. Pro Stock very, very tight. I've been talking about it all, uh, all session and that's another indication of how fantastic the racing is. Rob Quattrochi now and Peter Ridgway. Ridgway, another Victorian competitor. Quattrochi, the South Australian. Valvoline, big supporters of the Chevrolet Beretta. 
These uh, guys have really become a force to be reckoned with in pro stock around the country. A good performance here will see them uh, lead the Australian Pro Stock Championship for 1996. Still a couple of rounds to go though, but uh, here at Eastern Creek Raceway for the Nitro Championships, they're looking to do well. As is Peter Ridgway, the 1995 Australian Pro Stock Champion. We saw him knock out the 94 champion in the first round. Can he get rid of Quattrochi? It's going to be a big ask. Quattrochi was the number one qualifier. A whole shot to Ridgway. It looked pretty quick. Reaction time for Peter Ridgway, but look at the horsepower from the Chevy Beretta. Another fantastic race in Pro Stock. 790, 272 miles per hour. You can see how uh, fine these cars come off the start line, just raising the front ends coming out hard, the front wheel's dancing, then they settle down and shift up through the gears. You've got to be very precise with the gear changes, hit it right in the power band, shifting at uh, around 9,000 RPM, and Rob Quattrochi carries it through for the win. Final now of Pro Stock Eliminator, Joe Polito, the number two qualifier, up against Rob Quattrochi, the number one qualifier. Well, it's been a great matchup right the way through the event so far, and to have the number one and two qualifiers meet in the finals, it just means that we're going to see an absolutely fantastic race. Both these guys ran 780s in qualifying. Quattrochi's pulled a 780 out in eliminations. Polito yet to do so, but he can find the horsepower when it's needed. Both cars going into stage. On the limit as they come out half, both of them carrying the front wheels some uh, a fair way. Polito, I think, has got some problem. Yes, Rob Quattrochi will charge away for the win. Rob Quattrochi picks up an easy win in Pro Stock Eliminator. 789, 274 kilometres an hour to be the winner here at the 1996 Nitro Championships. Well, we have a look at on the replay. Polito was strong off the start line, and then the car just nosed over. We can see now the front end's on the ground. He's got a problem. Quattrochi charges ahead. Doesn't even look like putting a foot wrong. Great win for Rob Quattrochi here at Eastern Creek Raceway, and that closes it here for Pro Stock Eliminator at the 1996 Nitro Championships.